ALS uh, is a disease of progressive weakness. So as opposed to a sudden onset, for example, a stroke, where all of a sudden you become very d disabled. In ALS, uh, it's something that starts much more subtly. Um, and often it takes about a year uh, for people to finally receive the diagnosis because you don't wake up one day with all of the signs and symptoms. So the signs and symptoms are weakness primarily, you, you know, uh, at, but it is progressive. Um, and it does not come and go. And it tends to start in one place in the body and then spread slowly uh, to other parts of the body. Um, and then, as I said, it does ultimately affect uh, the swallowing and breathing muscles. Um, and so people end up uh, dying of respiratory insufficiency, or they can die of complications from problems with swallowing um, if, that, if those aren't you know, tended to. Um, I'm impotent as a clinician to stop the progression of ALS. It's, it's uh, been a difficult uh, uh, disease. Like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's, other neurodegenerative diseases, it's very hard to know why that's happening. Um, but I'm very proud uh, and passionate about the multidisciplinary care, which means a whole bunch of providers in one spot who see people who have ALS at Ohio State um, who try and uh, uh, to help anticipate problems before they happen. Um, and support them through that journey. All the while fighting like heck to understand the why and how to stop it. The number one risk factor is age. Um, so it, it, it affects people who are in, uh, in general in their sort of mid 50s to 60s or so, a little bit earlier than the other big neurodegenerative diseases. Um, and, uh, but it's a very wide uh, sort of distribution there. Um, so age is the number one thing. People who serve in the US military are twice as likely to have ALS as other people. Um, it is, of course, anecdotally known that, that people who are athletes uh, and people who tend to be otherwise healthy tend to develop ALS for whatever reason. Um, and uh, sometimes I wonder if being well endowed in their motor neurons puts them at risk in some way. But to be honest, um, things like pesticides, environmental exposures, all these other things, it's very hard to nail down those exact things. I would say what, the, what we've learned lately that has really been uh, helpful is that there's definitely also a genetic predisposition and there are defi there's definitely more genes associated with ALS now than there ever were. So, um, so I guess I would say age is the number one and then lots of other things that we don't understand.